I was going to say, it's strange to start an Easter service in silence, but somebody needs to be heard. <laughs> so we have a little bit of celebration, but I want to say to you, we have a lot of celebration this morning. Good morning. Happy Easter to you on this. Can I say it's a beautiful Easter morning? I can say it because Christ is risen, and that is the reason that we are gathered. You don't have to mind the white things falling from the sky outside. But Christ is risen, and not only that, it means that you will be raised too. That is why we gather, and so I say to you, happy Easter and good morning. We are gathered for that very reason, that Christ is risen, and he raises you from the grave as well. Uh, I don't have any announcements for you other than to say welcome to worship here at First Lutheran Church. It is a great, a great delight to be gathered together by the Holy Spirit and that's indeed why you are here. The Holy Spirit wants you to hear this word that Christ himself is risen. I invite you to stand as you are able. Christ is risen today. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The grace of our risen Savior, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And we sing. Fill us with your love. 
fill us with your love with hearts of grace for everyone fill us with your love sing hallelujah And let us pray. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And you may be seated as we turn to our lessons. The first reading comes from the book of Acts, the 10th chapter. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace of Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread through Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witness to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as the judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please read responsively with me. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. The righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. And declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. 
This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have, and you have become my salvation. my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord, this has been done. The day the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. The second reading comes from the book of 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, though which also you are being saved if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Sisyphus, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to, to believe. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite all children who are here this morning to come forward for the children's message. Well, good morning to you, children. It is wonderful to see you. Happy Easter to you. Happy Easter. Happy, well, thank you very much. It's a beautiful Easter morning, and I thought we'd celebrate a little bit. I brought some balloons. You know, I met Mr. Twister. It was maybe a couple months ago, but he made some of these balloons for me, and, the, you know, they used to fit on my head and look like a big fish. How are they looking these days? Do you want to play with these balloons? Not well, you do. Okay, well, here, you can hold one, but... Is there something wrong with them? What do you think? Uh, nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. All right. Well, <laughs> I like the optimism. The op <clears throat> they were actually, I got them here on Shrove Tuesday, the day before Ash Wednesday. Our kids had them, uh, and we're playing with them. Oh, do you want, you'd like to play with one too? All right. Well, you're pretty happy with old balloons, but I'll tell you, they, they're looking not quite as good as they used to. Uh, they've lost a little air. I guess balloons don't last forever, do they? No. Well, may, I thought maybe we could celebrate today with some palms. I got these fresh off the trees. What do you think? They look pretty, f they're a little dry, aren't they? Yeah, they're not quite as good as they used to be. I guess the palm branches don't last forever either. These are just from last Palm Sunday a week ago today, but they're looking pretty tired. Well, they don't last forever either. What does last forever? Does anything last forever? You don't think so? Yeah, we look around the world, it's hard to find. But I want to remind you of something. We just said in the psalm, give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. We just said it. God's mercy endures forever. Do you know what mercy is? Mercy is what happens when you do something wrong and your parents or your brother or sister say, I forgive you and I love you. 
the psalm says God's mercy endures forever. And that's, that's what we're here to hear about today on Easter Sunday. There's another place in Scripture that says, while the grass withers and the flowers fade, God's word endures forever. And that's how we know about mercy is that God, God's word tells us that Jesus came and died on the cross a cross kind of like that one right up there. Yeah, we just saw that. You just saw the cross. He died there. But you know what else happened? What? He was raised from the dead. He didn't stay dead. He was raised from the dead, and that's pretty incredible. And because of that, God has mercy for you and says, I love you no matter what. This is the good news of Easter, that not only was Jesus raised from the dead, but because of him, you will be raised from the dead. Let us pray. Lord God, we give thanks for this word that tells of your mercy, which endures forever, and your promise itself, which never dies. I pray that you gather these children in and their families and all who are here in this promise of Christ, in the resurrection from the dead. May they know that you have them today and always in your mercy and grace. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, thank you guys for coming up and helping celebrate this day, helping preach the gospel. You can give those back to me if you want, or you can hold on to them. You can have it if you want. That's fine. As our kids are being seated, we invite you to rise as you're able and join us in our gospel acclamation. beautiful way to bring in the gospel. Thank you, musicians, for your music, uh, for proclaiming the gospel through music. And now we hear this gospel, the holy gospel, according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us for the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. For you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now after Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went out and told those who had been with him while they were mourning and weeping. But when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they would not believe it. After this, he appeared in another form to two of them as they were walking into the country. And they went back and told the rest but they did not believe him. Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven themselves as they were sitting at the table, and he upbraided them for their lack of faith and stubbornness because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news for the whole creation. The one who believes and is baptized will be saved, 
but the one who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. By using my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes in their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, we give thanks to you, for you have answered us in Jesus' death and resurrection, and you have become our salvation. Amen. As the psalmist has led us, I say again to you, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And who would have predicted this? It's less likely than an 11 seed making it to the final four. I can tell you that much. We'll find out how that goes later today. Well, no one was predicting this other than those who had God's word already, other than the word of God itself. And by the way, the word of God has the only perfect bracket. Or in the words of our own podcast host here at First Lutheran, Mason Van Essen, the word of God remains undefeated, and it is. For against all odds and human logic, Christ is risen from the dead. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. So now to all of you who are here on this festive Easter day, you have been gathered here by the power of the Holy Spirit. Whether here in person in the sanctuary or whether there are those watching later online, whether you're here for the music or just to be with family and friends, whether you came for an earlier breakfast, the Holy Spirit has brought you to this very moment, to this very place, to hear this particular message that Jesus Christ died for your failures. Yet, he did not stay on the cross. Though he was buried in the ground, he did not stay in the tomb. He was raised from the dead to eternal life so that you, too, will have resurrection from your tomb. We don't like to think about our tombs. But he was raised so that you, too, will be raised from your grave. And you know what? You do not deserve this. That's for sure. And neither do I. But that's the amazing truth this Easter day. That Christ died for the ungodly. That is for you and me. And while you and all in this old world outside of faith continue to look for victory and righteousness, peace, love, and justice in all sorts of wrong places, Christ now has accomplished all for you. And he gives it to you now when he says, fresh from the stale, dead tomb, I forgive you. Amen. Now, I suspect you know already that the tomb was empty on that Easter Sunday morning over 2,000 years ago. Mark tells us so with historical certainty. But what does that empty tomb mean for you and for me now? What does it mean for our world, which is still full of its own problems today, isn't it? You may be thinking to yourself, well, yes, Christ is risen, but what does that do for us now? What does that do for Russia and Ukraine or Israel and Palestine or Haiti or the United States for that matter? or South Dakota, or Sioux Falls, or you might be wondering, what does that do for my own family? What does Jesus' resurrection mean for the questions of my life, whether they be where, I, where I'm eating today or if I'm eating today? Whether those questions are whether I'm worried about my March Madness bracket being busted, or if my whole life has become busted. Well, I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you that the empty tomb points to the risen Christ, who is the answer to all of these problems, to all of your worries, whatever they may be, because on the cross, Jesus correctly, and against all visible odds, said on Good Friday, it is finished. 
That is, your sin is finished. The problems of this world are finished. And death itself is finished. But no one knew that. Christ said it on Friday, but no one knew it on Friday or Saturday. No one knew it until Sunday, and then only a few, and many doubted. And now today, too, not many know this, and those who have heard it don't believe it. You would not know this either until after what happened next. Well, Mark tells us what happened next, and he says it's nothing short of incredible. After Jesus died that Friday afternoon, Mark says that Joseph of Arimathea, who was a Pharisee and a secret disciple of Jesus, got permission to take his body. John tells us that Nicodemus also, who was a Pharisee and secret follower of Christ, helped, and they together buried Jesus' dead body in the tomb. They wrapped it in linens and rolled a big stone against the door. It was final. Even though Jesus had preached that in three days he would be raised, they did not believe it. They had enough problems of their own to think about, I'm sure. By the rules of this world, outside of faith, the dead must stay dead. That's the rules, right? That's how it is. And Jesus was dead. Now, the dead must stay dead for many good reasons. There are good reasons for this. We have large stones, or our version of large stones, heavy caskets or concrete vaults, or six feet of soil or fire to separate the living from the dead. We have all of these things, and the laws actually mandate that we use them. And so we assume that the dead stay dead. We assume that. So when Mark tells us that on that Sunday morning, first day of the week, as the light was coming into the day, the Marys were there to bring spices to anoint Jesus' dead body. But they didn't make it to the tomb before they saw that the stone was moved. They were wondering to themselves, who's going to move the stone for us? It's rather heavy. Do you suppose they were a little surprised when they saw the stone already moved? And now I ask you a question. If that were you, would you have the bravery to keep going and stick your head in that tomb and look inside? It's a little creepy. But they did. They were brave, these Marys. Not only did they stick their head in, they went all the way into the tomb. And in the cold, dead tomb, there was a man standing there. And Mark says they were startled. Now, I bet that's a bit of an understatement. I bet they were scared out of their minds. He was a man, and it wasn't Jesus in a white robe. And the man said, don't be startled. Don't be afraid. Jesus, whom you're looking for, he's not here. And they said, yeah, we see that. And then he said, he has been raised. He has been raised. Now go tell the disciples and Peter. Tell all of them that Christ has been raised. And these Marys, these women who love Jesus, who were the first to have a sunrise Easter service, to hear the very first Easter sermon from an angel as a preacher, no less. Mark tells us that they turned around and they ran out of the tomb and they ran away in fear, terror, and amazement. And they told nobody. They told nobody. They were afraid and silent. So was their sin. And so was ours. When we hear this news and we think, well, maybe, maybe. But God was not done with them. And while you may leave this place a little numb too, you might. You might tell no one about this good news that we're celebrating. But I want you to know that when the Holy Spirit plants faith, the word of Christ does not stay silent. It cannot. The women did not stay silent eventually, and neither will you. Mark tells us that after this happened, then Jesus 
the raised Jesus appeared first to Mary Magdalene, and then she went and told the disciples about it. The disciples were gripped in their grief, hiding, weeping together, trying to figure out how their lives would go on without Jesus. They were in so much grief that when Mary told them what she saw, the raised Jesus, they did not believe her. Then Jesus appeared to two disciples, likely on the road to Emmaus. And when they went to tell the rest of the disciples that Jesus was raised, they did not believe them. For such good news to share, there was much unbelief that first Easter day in the Christian church. The future preachers of this good news of Christ, which would go to the corners of the world, to your corner of the world, these future preachers did not believe. But Jesus was not done with them, and he's not done with you. You see, Jesus was not going to be held back by a stone, no matter how large. And even the unbelief of his own disciples would not nullify the mission of the gospel. Nor is his resurrection held back today by caskets or vaults or decay or six feet of dirt or time or fire. No. And it is not held back either by your questions of doubt or dismay or our own problems of sin, death, and the devil in this world. You see, Jesus then went right to the disciples himself. And first, Mark tells us he upbraided them. Now, we don't use that word very often. It's a great word, though. He upbraided them. He gave them the business for their stubbornness because he'd sent them two good preachers already and they did not believe. So he had to preach to them. And he upbraided them and then he forgave them. And then he said, now go share this good news to all the corners of the world that all who believe and are baptized will be saved. You know something? Christ is now giving you this very same word by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you who are baptized and have been given faith, you have this sure salvation. And not only does this word which comes to you today have a perfect bracket, it remains undefeated. Now last week, my wife had the opportunity to join the South Dakota Symphonic Choir and the South Dakota Symphony in their performance of Johannes Brahms' German Requiem. Now, maybe some of you sang in this or played with the orchestra. Maybe some of you were there at the performance. Maybe some of you have never heard of Brahms. It doesn't matter. Uh, but as she went to the rehearsal and practiced this very large monumental piece on Monday nights for months prior to the performance, I got to hear the play-by-play. -play. What was working musically? What wasn't? Which scriptures Brahms chose out of Luther's Bible and Why? And I was curious to learn that Brahms perhaps didn't have a strong belief in the resurrection. But he did feel the sting of loss and death in his own life. And he wanted to create a requiem not for the dead, but for those who remained. Somehow this composer, Brahms, who was perhaps of questionable faith, knew that a preacher is needed for the rest of us remaining here. For the women in the tomb who were afraid for the disciples huddled in grief, and for you and me, mired in our own sin and doubt. And so this choir and orchestra, they made beautiful music. They sang these beautiful promises of Scripture. While all flesh is grass, and the glory of man withers like the flower, the word of the Lord endures forever. My wife Erin told me of the difficult yet effective musical texture of the soprano singing tote, 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 higher and higher in pitch, which is translated death, death, death. Where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? For we shall all in Christ in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trombone. That's how Luther translates it, by the way. My apologies to our trumpet player, Matt, who will be up here soon. Uh, but Luther says, at the last trombone, well, then, you and all those in Christ will be raised incorruptible. This is the promise of Jesus on Easter. 
It is the beautiful promise that holds you now as you've heard it. The performance of this piece, Brahms Requiem, was a week ago Saturday, and I stayed home with our three little kids. We watched it in our living room live on the television. The kids were missing their mother, who had been rehearsing this piece most of the nights that week. Father, Dad, wasn't uh, quite as good as Mom, and they wanted to say hi. They wanted to give her a hug. And so they delighted at seeing her occasionally on the screen, one of the many faces in the choir. But it was in the midst of their wanting to see Mom in person that the choir sang the words of Isaiah, As one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you. And our oldest said to me, Dad, I feel a little better seeing Mom, hearing those words which I had repeated for him. And so it is with God's word. And the Holy Spirit, it finds its mark even and especially in our own doubt and our own fear. And how about for you? As the women fled the tomb in fear, as the disciples hid in weeping grief, as Brahms himself did not know what he believed, and as our own kids felt the anxiety of this old life we all live in the midst of doubt, fear, our own sin, our own idolatry, and death. But I say to you now, the good news of Christ has come for you. He died for your sake, taking your sin, your doubt, your fear, taking away your idolatry and even your own death, taking that with him to the cross and into the ground but nothing could keep him dead. And he was raised so that you too who are baptized into his death are also baptized into his resurrection. This is his promise for all of you now who hear this word. Tot, death, where is thy sting? For Christ is risen. He is risen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And... Amen. For you know now that your Redeemer lives. I invite you to turn in your service bulletins to page four and join us in our song of the day. Please rise as you are able. Lost and frightened in feeling sadness someone you love has gone away seeking answers finding questions could it be true what the people say he has been raised he is not here can you believe your ears let go of all your We are struggling, we are wondering, can we walk the streets of faith? We are loved and we're forgiven, why don't we trust in these arms of grace? He has been raised, he is not here, can you believe your ears? Let go of all your Mourning and weeping has turned to rejoicing. The stones from our tomb have been rolled away. Life has come from death today now. He has been raised, he is not here. Can you believe your ears? Let go of all your hurts and fears. Jesus is alive.
now with the whole church, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing in the risen life of Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Almighty God, on this Easter morning we sing hallelujah to you, our great God of promises made and promises kept. You did not spare even your own son to be our savior. And because he has been raised, we too, by our baptism, are forgiven of our sin and raised to new life. Continue to make us your Easter people with a holy joy and abundant in giving as you have first given us. Help us bless our homes, work, and places of leisure, and neighbors near and far in your risen name. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you promised to deliver all who call upon your name. We pray for those persecuted for their faith in you. By your strength, help them endure every trial. Give them and us faith and perseverance. Give us eyes to see those who are lost and broken and hearts to bring your healing word and peace. We continue to pray for peace for the war that has overtaken the nation of Haiti and for the war-weary people of Ukraine and Russia, Israel and Palestine. Lord, in your mercy. In you, dear God, there is no darkness at all, and so we pray that you would bring light and hope to those who are suffering, especially those who have been hospitalized. We pray for Mary Rankin, Jerry Hansen, Bud Holt, Stan Schmidt, and the ongoing needs of Harper Skieski. Bring them and all who are in our silent prayers this day, healing through your word and through those who care for them. O Lord of the tomb, thank you that through death through the death and resurrection of your Son, you have given us the assurance of eternal life. So comfort the family of Elaine Weiss and Jim Fink, who have died recently with your promise of eternal life. Bring them and all of us the endless peace won through the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. And finally, give us joy in your son's great victory feast as he shares it with us in mercy and love as we eat his true body and drink his precious blood in faith bring us all the blessing of heaven as you have promised in jesus name lord in your mercy and now joining our voices with the faithful ones in every time and place 
we offer our prayers in the name of the risen one, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you now to share that peace with your neighbors. We invite you to be seated as offering is received. Join us in singing Savior Song. Sing to the one who has known us forever. Dance to the rhythm of freedom and love. Rest and be sure in the arms of forgiveness. Join in the Savior song. I'm hoping for a brand new day where we stop on the Long enough to look in each other's eyes and see the precious gift of every life. Sing to the one who has known us forever. Dance to the rhythm of freedom and love. Rest and be sure in the arms of forgiveness. Join in the Savior's song. There's nothing that can take away All the love of the one who has saved us We may walk, we may run or fall But God is right here with us Through it all Sing to the one who has known us forever Dance to the rhythm of freedom and love Rest and be sure in the arms of forgiveness. Join in the Savior's song. Sing to the one. Sing to the one who has known us forever. Dance to the rhythm of freedom and love. Rest and be sure in the arms of forgiveness. Join in the Savior. Sing to the one who has known us forever. Dance to the rhythm of freedom and love. Rest and be sure in the arms of forgiveness. Join in the Savior song. invite the congregation to please stand for our offertory prayer and let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, grant us your Holy Spirit that we might hear and share your promise of new life with all in need. Amen. And so on this Easter day, we are here to give what Christ has promised. And as we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread. He blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks... He gave it to his disciples, saying, This is the New Testament in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. 
gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our risen Lord comes to us in the breaking of the bread with his body and blood, forgiving, promising forgiveness and new life. Let us feast this Easter day on Christ, the bread of heaven, And you may be seated.
invite the congregation to please stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And let us pray. Life-giving God, we give you thanks for nourishing us with the bread of heaven, the very body and blood of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. As you send us into the world, keep us steadfast in the promise and life-giving hope of your resurrection, that by the Holy Spirit we might testify to the power of your victory over sin and death for all people. Amen. And now receive the benediction. May Almighty God, who raised our Lord from the dead, lift you up and restore your life in the victory of his Son. May Jesus Christ, the Son of God, give you his word of new life, that you might be strengthened by the power of his resurrection to life everlasting. May God, the Holy Spirit, who creates, calls, and gathers the church in faith, Keep you in God's baptismal promise this day and always. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Please join us in our sending song, To Be Alive. He's the bill of love that is alive. He got saving son who brought us back from life of death to be alive. There is nothing I can do to save me, only God carries us home. So we live mercy, open freedom, loving another true. Saving Son who brought us back From the life of death to be alive Join the singing, join the celebration Jesus lives, we are restored Love alive, giving and forgiving Loving another to be Saving son who brought us back from the life of death to be alive, to be alive, to be alive, to be alive is to live the love that is alive. In God saving son who brought us back from the life of death to be alive. Sing it on now one more time. To be alive is to live the love that is alive. In God saving son who brought us back. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Now go in peace. We are sent in the freedom of Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia.
the saving sun who brought us back from the life of death to be alive. Saving some who brought us back from the 